having that collateral on the charge on another property, um, you know, the big thing is it gives the lender a little bit more peace of mind. He knows it's going to mitigate his risk a little bit. So it allows him to maybe be a little more creative. So if something were to go south on the deal that you're working on, um, you know, the lender has the ability, ability to sell off that other property. Something to also consider is if you are going to be using that piece of property as collateral, most lenders or financial institutions are going to look to get an appraisal or at least some sort of valuation on the property. So there are some extra costs associated with using this tool. Having that collateral on the other property um, gives the lender peace of mind and allows them to actually just you know move through with the transaction. You want to buy a property, but you don't have enough money, you don't have good enough credit, or something else is holding you back. But maybe you own real estate or someone else in your family or amongst your friends does. Was well, there any way that we can put together a deal creatively? Well, in today's video, Josh and Aaron from Finlay Mortgages sit down and break down for us exactly how collateralization works. Now, this is a topic that most beginner investors won't come across, and it's only really with experience that you'll stumble your way into this subject matter. Thankfully, the guys break down for us today exactly what this term means, what we can expect, and even why it's important to us as real estate investors and how it might allow us to do more deals faster and get financing when you originally didn't think you could. If you want to reach out to the guys, we're going to throw a link in the video description down below where you can jump over to their website, get their contact information, but let's dive in today's video. Collateralization. That's what we're going to be talking about today with the mortgage guy. So I got Josh and Aaron back here. Hey guys, how's hey. it going? Hey, good. How are you? Good. So collateralization, definitely it's something that most beginner investors won't hear about. So let's talk about what is collateralization. Sure, yeah, so collateralization is basically using two properties for a loan. So um, if you were to have some value, you're purchasing a property and you have some value in another property, using both those properties, collateralizing them together, and then using it to move forward on a loan. Um, some added benefits to using this type of tool in your investor workbox, a toolbox, mm -hmm. is going to be that primarily private lenders like to use this strategy when lending money, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, reason one is that it makes them more comfortable with putting money out in regards to loan to value. And reason two for the borrower side is that if you extend the, the two pieces of collateral and have a lower loan to value, your rate actually might be a little lower than what you thought to begin with, so. Okay. Yeah. And then so when looking at why an investor might use it or how they would plug and play this into their strategies, do you guys mind just kind of breaking that down for us? Sure. Yeah, so one of the big aspects is, you know, having that collateral on the charge on another property, um, you know, the big thing is it gives the lender a little bit more peace of mind. He knows it's going to mitigate his risk a little bit. So it allows him to maybe be a little bit more creative. So maybe we can extend that loan to value out a little bit more if you're looking to um, get a little bit of extra uh, mortgage on the property as well too. Um, and you know, sometimes just with a riskier property, uh, as well, maybe it's a riskier situ uh, situation. Um, having that collateral on the other property um, gives the uh, the lender peace of mind and allows them to actually just you know move through with the transaction, um, if nothing else, as well too. So um, you know it's really on the lender's behalf. It's it's helping him to mitigate his risk and allowing him to be much more comfortable with a deal that maybe requires some creative financing and some creative solutions. Yeah, I like to think of it as like liquid money for a down payment without being liquid. Like like you still have the equity and you can use it, you just don't have to refinance to take it out and start playing with it. Mm -hmm. And do you guys mind maybe going a little bit deeper into this just to make sure that the audience understands? So what exactly does this look like? Is the lender putting a new charge on my existing property? Do you mind just breaking that down? Sure, so the way it's gonna work is if you're using um, a cross collateralization approach, primarily you're purchasing a property or you're gonna be refinancing um, a larger property. Mm -hmm. So you see it a lot in commercial lending where um, somebody will be purchasing a property or and the value, uh, they won't have enough liquid assets to be able to do it. So they'll get this other property that they have or they own, it's a rental property, whatever it is, um, and they will have some equity in that property. So the lender will actually char make the charge on both properties. So if you have a first mortgage on your initial property, mm -hmm. it'll go in second position on that property and basically eat up the equity that they're gonna be using on top of also making a first charge on your purchase as well. 
And so that second charge that's going on the property, is that going to 100% loan to value or does it depend upon the amount I'm borrowing? Well, I think it's dependent on how much the lender wants to use of it. So if you have like a $500,000 charge on your first property, he's gonna collateralize it with that other charge on the second property as well. Okay, and then so taking it one step further, what are my costs? Yeah, so yeah. great question. So there are some extra costs associated with using this tool. Um, you're gonna have an additional fee with the lawyer, so it's gonna be the same thing as registering on title with your initial property, okay. except you're gonna have to register again on the second property as well. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to go through registering on title, pulling a pin, going through the same process, so you're definitely gonna see an increase in lawyer fees when closing on a transaction like that. And then, is there any other steps involved? Does it take longer than a traditional mortgage? Sure, so I don't think it takes longer. I think it, the capacity of the lawyer's office to close a transaction, they're usually decently quick and they know what they're doing. Um, something to also consider is if you are gonna be using that piece of property as collateral, most lenders or financial institutions are gonna look to get an appraisal or at least some sort of valuation on the property. Mm -hmm. So you may have to pay out of pocket again for, to get that value to be able to support um, what the lender wants in regards to the value for that piece of land. Yeah, and just one thing to follow up there as well too is it's important to note who may hold the first mortgage on that other property. There are some financial institutions that have clauses that don't allow for secondary uh, charges or mortgages to be placed under there. So that's something to keep in mind as well too when determining what properties you might take. Got you. And then so if I use a property once for collateral, is it done? Can I use it a second time? Uh, so it depends on how much equity you have in the property, right? It depends on the position in which that lender would like to go. So obviously if you start getting into third or fourth positions on, on real estate, lenders get um, either greedy or are worried mm -hmm. about their position in that property. So primarily, you know, second positions on property that's already owned um, is, is usually what we're seeing. Third and fourth positions get a little dicey. Um, a lot of guys just don't like the risk associated with being in a position like that because mm -hmm. for anybody who doesn't know, um, the position in your mortgage is basically who gets paid first mm -hmm. if that thing goes power of sale. So if say something were to go wrong in your plans and you forgot, didn't make your payments and the uh, initial lender on that property were to go power of sale and they sold the property for a percentage of what it's worth, Maybe the first mortgage is getting paid. Maybe the second, if there's any room. But you know, the third and fourth guys, you know, they might. There's a risk of not getting paid out, right? So, uh, the majority of the time, we like to see it at least in second position. Okay, and then taking it one step further, another question related to collateral mortgages. Say I have property A already. I'm buying property B, and we're going collateral against property A. Until I refinance or pay off this mortgage, is that collateral always on that property? Is it possible to discharge just the one charge? Yeah, so that's uh, the collateral that's on the second property is gonna be tied with that first mortgage. So that's gonna be on there until you're able to either pay that off or refinance it out to move forward. Yeah. Okay, and then are there any risks involved other than what we've discussed so far related to taking on a collateral charge on an existing yeah, property? Absolutely. Um, so if you do have, you know, you have a property up that's clear and free and you uh, put a collateral charge on there as well, um, if something were to go south on the deal that you're working on, um, you know, the lender has the ability, ability to sell off that other property to pay for the charge. And it, it doesn't necessarily just end at what, um, you know, the amount of the charge that's on there, they're able to take the entire property as well too so that is a, a, a large risk associated with that as well so I think it's a, it's it's a risk that as investors we all know if you don't make your payments power mm -hmm. of sale is a real thing um, being smart and being prudent and getting into loans that you know you can service or getting into specific uh, loans that maybe are prepaid so if you if you know that you're gonna have issues with payments or if you know um, this might be a problem being proactive about that is the most important thing because there are lenders out there who are willing to work on creating solutions for investors like prepaying all the payments out of the advance of the loan so if you if you're in a situation where you know you can't make those payments um, depending on the loan of value most lenders that we work with will be able to make that prepayment and take it out of the advance so you don't have to worry about that anymore okay and let's talk now about an example Could you guys just kind of break down for us or illustrate how this actually works IRL Sure, yeah. So we had a client a little while ago. He uh, was purchasing a property. Um, he was dealing with another mortgage agent at the time. He had 
receive um, some sort of commitment, uh, it fell through. So he was firm on the deal. Um, we had uh, spoken to a few of our, our lenders in regards to what that looks like uh, moving forward for him. Um, we were able to get a commitment based off the value of that property coming in. Um, say he was purchasing it for 400000 the client, the, the lender needed to see at least it was worth you know $400,000. The lender, uh, he doesn't get appraisals. He has one of his um, real estate agents that he trusts walk through the property and she was basically like, this isn't coming in anywhere close to what you need. Mm -hmm. So we're in a tight situation now. We're like, okay, so you're firm on a deal. You have to close on it. You don't really want to come up with a few hundred thousand dollars to close on this thing. What are we going to do? So we were able to look at um, his portfolio properties and he had a rental property that had about $250,000 in equity in it. The lender also did a, a drive-by, took a look at the property, assessed the value, it came in. Um, so he was able to extend that, that amount that he was originally able to do mm -hmm. um, by collateralizing that property and using the equity on that other property for the purchase. So when they closed, they obviously closed uh, with charges on both properties. Um, but we were able to actually be a little bit flexible with how that worked and we were able to uh, prepay all the payments out of the advance of the loan mm -hmm. and give him some money to actually do construction on the project. So he was trying to implement the BRRRR strategy and because he already had to put so much money into the down payment of that project, more money than he had initially thought, right. he didn't have the liquidity to be able to actually execute on the exit strategy. So we were able to kind of fix that, mitigate his cost by being able to pull some money out of the actual sale by using the equity in the other property. Awesome. Anything else you guys would like to mention about collateral mortgages before we wrap up? Yeah, I think, I think it's important to um, realize that if you don't own the property, so we can still use another property, say yeah. your parents, for example, um, or, or a business partner. A joint venture uh, partner. A joint venture partner. Um, somebody who has the equity in the property, we can still use it. They will need to sign the mortgage documents. Mm. Um, it's not like we can just use them and they can't sign it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's their property. Um, but you know, we, we found that even some joint venture partners who maybe don't have liquid assets available to them, um, they can still be a beneficial to closing on a transaction with somebody because they still have the equity built up in, in that property or that home to be able to extend that to their joint venture partner to maybe you know, move forward on a purchase or, um, or, or offer some sort of liquidity to be able to help with renovations for a project. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic information. So I know a lot of my audience lives across Ontario, Canada. If people are interested in learning more about collateral mortgages in Ontario, are you guys able to help them regardless of where they are in the province? Yeah, anywhere in Ontario, we're able to help. Um, most of our private mortgages and, and some of the solutions that we have available to us um, locally, most of the guys we deal with in, like to be able to drive to yeah. see the property and to physically be able to visit the property. So our private mortgage solutions are primarily in Ontario, but because we are a DLC franchise, we do have the ability to be able to do mortgages across Canada. Um, that being said, the majority of our solutions for the private side are in Ontario. Awesome. So if people want to learn more, can they just reach out to you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Facebook, um, email, um, a lot of the guys that uh, I've already spoken to in some of the cash flow tribes, you guys have my phone numbers already. And, um, you know, I'm pretty easy at giving out if you guys ever reach out on Facebook. So if you ever need to text or call, uh, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook via Messenger or a, a DM. And, you know, we always love to chat with you guys. So we'll, we'll give our phone numbers up for you guys if you ask. So Yeah, anytime. Awesome. 24-7, 365 we answer our phone or we try to at least. <laughs> yeah. Love it. So again, I think this is an amazing tool to add to our tool chest or our tool belt as real estate investors. We'll throw links to all the guys' contact information down in the video description below. So if you guys are interested, I really encourage you to reach out to Josh and Aaron and just find out more because I think collateral mortgages and collateralization is something that only investors stumble upon once they've heard other investors talk about it. And yet it could really help a lot of people that have their principal residence and want to break into the investing game, but they feel like they're 
two years, three years away from doing it. This potentially could be a great way to speed up your timeline and get into that first property. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks again to Josh and Aaron for taking the time to shoot this video. And I really appreciate them deep diving on a subject matter where I find there's a lot of confusion and misunderstandings. And again, I really appreciate them bringing clarity to the financing process because if there's one thing I've learned about creating content on real estate, in YouTube, it's that you guys have a lot of questions about financing. So if you've got more questions about financing, jump in that comment section down below and let us know what would you like to see us discuss and answer on future videos on my YouTube channel. And otherwise, again, all their contact information's in the video description. Jump over, get on a call, learn a little bit more about the process and set yourself up for success by understanding what's necessary to finance that deal so you can go make money with real estate. I'll see you guys in the next video.